first though he represented Norway in secret last night as one half of sub Wiffler remember this Every soul that wolf eats my grandma, give that wolf a banana, give that wolf, give that wolf. Well, please welcome A1 star, Ben Adams. Ta -da! Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. Me neither, me neither. So good, come and sit down. Because we have Eurovision royalty, the last UK entry to win the contest. Would you believe standing for Katrina? <laughs> Have a wee seat. It's lovely to see you. Great really to see you. you. Thank you. And wow, this is the last time we won. When I, I rem looking back at that performance you had, I remember it being huge and big yes. and over the top and all of that. Now though, it kind of was quite small. <laughs> Rain, compared to now, it was a barn dance. I mean, you see the lights now. I'm surprised there wasn't a blackout of electricity <laughs> all across the UK when the semi-finals started. Wasn't it incredible? There's it was... a global shortage of sequins <laughs> and glitter. I mean, it's unbelievable. We had an angle poised lamp was our lighting. <laughs> and it was just, I was wearing the clothes I'd worn all week because the stylist came in, tried to put me in a union flag dress right so I was like I don't think so no that's not really it was just a bit of a shambles I was wearing a coat that only had one shoulder pad we brought our keyboard player who was the conductor of a 24 piece orchestra and he was the keyboard player from Ozzy Osbourne's band and Deep Purple. I mean, it was just our, our guitar player wasn't even there. We had a stand in who was playing bass yeah. instead of guitar. I mean, it was a nightmare but it worked so it incredibly worked. well. That moment, you know when you know when all the results are coming in and you're sitting there waiting, that must be so scary. That's ice in the tummy time, isn't it? That's like <gasps> Well, the reason it was nerve-wracking was that everybody was saying there's no way you can win because of the political voting. Uh -huh. And it was like a mantra. You can't win. The UK can't win because of political voting. Right. And I just thought, I'm not going to let a little politics get in the way of a win. But I also didn't let anything get in the way of a couple glasses of champagne. Good girl. And I had <laughs> no idea. Well, I know, but I had... Ben, I had no idea that if you win, you have to go back out and perform it. Oh, right. And so, it's a slightly different performance. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we won, and then I felt a hand on my shoulder, and it was Ronan Keating, who was the presenter, and he said, come on, love, you've got to sing it again. I was like, oh, okay. I don't think so. <laughs> but it was fantastic. I mean, Thank remember you. it with huge affection. And we kind of didn't know, Ben, that you were actually part of this band. No, I know. I, this is extraordinary. Ordinary because yeah. you were, it was kind of like the masked singer. It was like the longest version of the last singer I think yes. there's ever been. Well, we only just took the masks off and told people it was, it was, I mean, my, even my family didn't really know. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I'll be honest, I've just kind of turned 40 and it's not exactly what I imagined <laughs> I was going to be doing. It, was, 40, it was bonkers in the yeah. best possible way, as only Eurovision can be. Well, I don't think there's, I mean, the song's called Give That Wolf a Banana, so I don't think there's yes. any other platform you could probably get away no, with. No, I don't think doing give, you couldn't this. give that wolf a banana anybody else. No, exactly. So this was the but perfect... How did, it, how did it come about that you were actually part of the Norwegian engine? Well, they do um, songwriting camps for MGP, which is like the preliminary rounds. Um, but there's a big competition over, over there. So all the best songwriters and producers in Norway get together to write. And the, the brief that day was write the most ridiculous song you can think of, <laughs> which we did. Um, yeah. And uh, we just laughed the whole day. And then we didn't really think about it after that. Just thought it was a funny waste of time. And then uh, NRK came to us and said, well, we'd like you to do it. And we were like, well, we don't want to front it ourselves because obviously doing a song called Give That Wolf a Banana could be career suicide. <laughs> so uh, they were like, well, what if you wore a mask? And we're like, no, let's try and find. And surprisingly, it's very hard to find an artist that wants to do a song called give that wolf a banana so we, i know so we ended up having to do it ourselves and i've just it's had the so most ridiculous uh, ridiculous time ever since it's brilliant it's yeah. absolutely but and sam Ryder sort of outed you because nobody well, really knew about no, it no i know the he recognized he could hear you he yeah because all, all the eurovision artists they all you know we all do sort of these pre-parties and stuff like that and yes. i could see that you know one breakfast time we were keeping ourselves to ourselves, but he blocked me, and I thought, oh, oh no, here we go, the game is up. No. And then I think, you know, Ronan Keating again and him were having a chat on um, 
radio and, and sort of, I don't think he realised that we were keeping it a real secret. So yeah. he just went out and said, oh, yeah, sure, I saw Ben having a croissant or whatever it was at breakfast. And then everybody knew. It's just such a great... This is the thing about Eurovision. There are so many great stories. And, Katrina, you said part of it as well is the camaraderie, you know, the, the, the fact that you get to meet people you would never meet in any other place, would you, from all... Well, no, and in 97, when I did it, Lorraine, it was like a small community. There were only 24 of us. We knew all the other people, and if the green room was configured. It was an actual room, and we were all piled in there together, sharing alcohol and little uh, pierogies and different types of food that people had brought, you know, fish and chips or whatever. <laughs> I was throwing hamburger sliders at people. <laughs> I don't know, it's very competitive right now, and I think yeah. maybe it was less so than... I remember almost feeling a bit guilty for winning because I thought, oh. oh, I feel bad for the other countries oh. that I really love and admire. Yeah, and, and as we said, this is we are hosting this for Ukraine. Yeah. That's yes. what it's all. That's what it's all about. Are you going to be there? Could you know you? Are you what's that? What you well, Lorraine, I was there last night, and ah. uh, about four hours ago, as it happens, <laughs> oh, and wow. I'll be <laughs> heading back up there right after this. Fantastic. We've got the, uh, Fantastic. Are you going up there? You don't no, know, I, I've literally just come back. We had like three concerts in a row because yeah. I mean, and that's the funny thing is when you sort of. Uh, join in this Eurovision uh, craziness. There's stuff to do every year, isn't there? And it's amazing. But it's lovely. So, and it's like yeah. it comes around and it's really good. You're going to be giving the results, aren't you? I for, am. I'm reading out the jury re results for Norway because I'm so Norwegian. You are very Norwegian. <laughs> you did that. Do you know what I did that? Isn't I did, that I the most nerve-wracking oh thing? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It was just... It was astonishing. It was 2003. Right. And it's when Gemini, God love them, got n no points oh, at tricky. all. God <laughs> love them. Yeah, they were saying... They, there was something wrong with their ear things. And yeah, they were right. singing it well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah, that is. I was trying to be nice. Yeah. Shall, we, shall we go back in time? To 2003. <laughs> and we are going yeah, the from the Netherlands to all of you. And here are the results. And the 12 points, they go to Ireland. Ireland, 12 points. There you go. There was Old Compton Street with a glass in my hand. And the reason I said we're still having a good time is because we got no points. Right, I see. So you knew by that time it oh, was no we were, we were, we were doomed. Right. We were doomed. Right, we were yeah. doomed. Cheers to, cheers to Sam Ryder, though, because yeah, he got right back in there. Oh, yes. You and I think... So UK amazing. is back on track. I UK think so. is back on track. I think it's so. been an embarrassment. I mean, there it were years, Tina. Lorraine, when the phone would ring, well, what do you think of this year's? And I just thought, I'm not going to say anything I because can't. I feel sorry I for them. But, you know, we're on track now. Sam was great. So. May is great. She's May is really very cool. I think it's actually great that the UK is taking it seriously now because, I mean, there are 200 million people watching this thing. Yeah. So what, what used to be sort of, a, I guess, embarrassing to be part of for anyone in the UK, like the kiss of death. Kind and of now it's, it's so not. Like no. Sam has had, the, I mean, we're going to be talking to him later on in the show. He has just gone from straight number one album. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but he's such a talent. Like, his voice is incredible. And we knew even, you know, because we were watching all the rehearsals and stuff like that, we knew that song was going to do well. And oh, he's such a nice absolutely. guy as well. Like, you couldn't meet a nicer guy. Perfect, so, perfect. Um, yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Enjoy right. every nanosecond. Okay. And uh, good luck with the, the reading you. out the results. It's the scariest thing you'll ever do in your whole life. It is. It is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to count to 1 to 12. Or just you'll remember. Be fine. You'll be right. <laughs> right, still to come, we continue our Eurovision celebrations. Can you remember? Fantastic. Thank you both so much. We'll be rejoined by my Eurovision guests. We've got a Ukraine inspired cocktail. Just pour the shot of blue into the yellow there. Okay. Um, and it all works lovely. Oh, ben, I know we were, talking, we were talking Eurovision, but you've got to come back and talk about your musical. I know, yeah, it's called, it's uh, so cool. it's called Eugenius. It's on at the Turbine Theatre right now, so you can come if you want. 28th of May is when it ends. 28th but, of May, it's yeah. on until. Sounds fantastic. Music, as we said, Amir. So good Unites for you. us all. Yeah. Unites us all. <laughs> and continue, you're heading back up to Liverpool. Head straight back up to Liverpool, my dear. May I just say Budmore, which Bud is Bud cheers. Budmore. Budmore. Oh, look at that. Gosh, I'll tell you what, we'll be thinking a few of these tomorrow night. Don't be mad. Is it, is it all in one or is it a sipper? Go on, Lorraine, down in one. It's a sipper, OK. Oh, it's a sipper. It's a sipper. It's not a down. It's not a down in all one. So, look, we are hosting this tomorrow night for Ukraine. Enjoy every single second of Eurovision. And that's all for today. Matt Willis, Claire Balding, join me next week. And we're backstage at the BAFTAs. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.